Hello and welcome to another learning video for the logic design class. My name is Roland Green and this is brought to you on behalf of Ada Kapanu or HKN. So today we're going to be continuing on with sequ uh, sequential design, uh, specifically looking, looking at a Moore sequence detector. So we're going to be looking at a Moore sequential circuit. So if we look at the definition of what we're looking to do, is we're looking for the sequence, sequence of 111 to occur. Now, it's also defined that we're going to reset when the sequence cannot be realized. And we're also going to have rolling detection. So to give an example of what rolling detection is, this is where if we receive the sequence 111, if we receive another 1, that will still count as receiving the sequence 111 because we're able to define you know, a new three digits we're looking at just shifted one over. So if we look at this example input, if we receive zero, we haven't received one, 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 and then we receive two ones in a row, and then a zero, we still have yet to receive one, 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 so we will never output a, a one. Now, if we skip forward a bit till we start receiving ones again, once we receive three ones in a row, our output turns to one, because these three make up the pattern 111. Now when we receive the next one, you see that we also receive a 1. This is because these three digits make up the pattern yet again of 111. So this is what we mean by rolling detection. So if we look at um, our Moore sequential circuit as it is right now, we have a couple things defined. We have S0, S2, S1, and S3. All of these have an output value already assigned to them. Now, as a reminder, between Moore and Mealy sequential circuits, a Moore sequential circuit has its outputs uh, tied to the states and its inputs only tied to the paths, compared with the Mealy, where the outputs and the inputs are tied to the paths. So we also have meanings already defined for each of these states. So when we're in S0, this will be kind of a reset state where this means that we've received a zero. Now S1 will denote the meaning that we've received a single one. S2 will denote the state where we've received two ones in a row. And finally, S3 will receive the state where we've achieved our target of three ones in a row. So if we get started, we have to first define what happens when we receive another zero when we're in S0 which is a reset state. So if we receive another zero, we'll simply stay in S0. We haven't gotten any closer to reaching the target of 111. However, if we receive a 1, we have gotten closer to 111, and we'll actually ch change to S1 on the input of x equals 1. And for output, we'll simply use the output of the state that we've reached. In this case, the output is going to be a 0. Or rather, the output will be the state that we're presently in, this S0 state. And then on x equals 1, we'll change to S1. So, moving on, if we're in S1 now, we have to define what happens for an input of a 0 and an input of 1. For an input of 0, we can no longer realize our target, so we will move back to S0. However, if we receive another 1, we'll be traveling back, or we'll be traveling forward to S2. And if we look in S1, we see that S1 has a defined output of 0 still. Moving on to S2, if we follow the same process, if we receive a 0, we'll be resetting. And we'll be continuing on, if we receive a 1, to S3.
Now if we look at S2 again for our output, we see that our output is still a zero. Now finally we receive, uh, we've reached our last state. In this case, we've received three ones in a row. Our output we know from looking at S3 will be a one. And we'll look at what happens when we receive a zero. If we receive a zero, we can no longer reach the sequence one, one, one again. So we'll reset the S0. However, when you receive another one, it's slightly different this time, as we simply stay in S3. We stay in S3 because, as we saw earlier in this example, we'll continuously output these ones as long as we have some combination in a row of three ones. So this will be the basic process you'll go through when you're solving more sequence detectors or more sequential circuits. Thank you.